I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about guilt in ministry as it relates to limitations and our lack of ability to perform the things we want to perform for the Lord out of our love and our desire to serve the Lord, but we're unable to perform those things. Um, when I was a teenager, I felt the Lord call me into full-time ministry, specifically to be a missionary to the Middle East. Um, I went to Moody Bible Institute, went to Bible College, and I did some training there. Um, distance learning, and I was preparing a team to go to the Middle East to be missionaries, and in the midst of all that excitement and getting all of that together, that's when my mental illness started in my 20s, my early 20s, and as a result, I was unable to do much of anything, and that's still largely the case. Um, I have good seasons and bad seasons, but as far as serving the Lord in a public way, um, even around people, it's very challenging for me, and it's not something that comes easily or naturally. It's not an ability that the Lord has blessed me with, and I struggle with that quite a bit. I, I, I used to struggle with it more than I do now. Um, I'm ex accepting it, slowly accepting that the Lord has a different course for my life, uh, but it has been a very challenging road. One thing that has really helped me is uh, a sermon that I heard on the radio. When I'm home alone, I listen to Moody Radio quite a bit, and one of the sermons that I heard um, oh, probably a few months ago was um, on the parable of the talents, and it really helped me to gain a better perspective on God's view of my ability and what he expects of me. So if you're not familiar, the parable of the talents is found in Matthew chapter 25. And in this parable, a landowner is going away and there's three servants and he gives one servant five talents Another servant, he gives two talents, and the last he gives one, each according to their ability, so according to what they're able to do. And as he goes away, he expects these servants to put these talents to use, and he wants a return on his investment. He's a landowner. So when he comes home, he finds that the one whom he gave five talents to has produced another five talents. And he says, you know, well done, you can enter my joy. The one who he gave two talents to had produced another two talents. He says, well done, you can enter my joy. But the one who he gave one talent to, he had a poor conception of who his master was and he believed his master to be a very harsh man. He was scared. He hid his talent in the dirt and said, here you go. I, you know, I, I'm a, I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. I dug a hole and put your money in it, so here's your money back. And that, ma that uh, servant was called wicked, and he was cast out into darkness. And this parable was told in, as an example or as a teachable moment for the disciples all of us who are disciples of Jesus, in the sense that we're all given talents and abilities, spiritual gifts, and the Lord expects of us uh, to use those for his kingdom. Now, using our talents, using the gifts that God has given us, does not bring salvation. It's not for salvation. It's to glorify God and to advance his kingdom. Our salvation was purchased on the cross. That's nothing that we could attain on our own. But there is a responsibility that we have as followers of Christ to be obedient with the gifts that we've been given. And we will be rewarded accordingly in heaven. So 
what really struck me in the sermon that was preached on this parable was the emphasis that the pastor gave just for a brief moment on the part that you know each servant was given a talent according to their own ability in other words god does not expect me to produce some kind of activity that he has not equipped me to do he's not a mean god he's not um he's not a taskmaster our god is a loving father and like any loving father he's not going to expect us to do something that we're unable to do he's going to lead us and guide us and be with us through our serving him and he's going to equip us for the tasks that he has for us so all that guilt that i had um it was easier after hearing that message and and being reminded of of that part of the parable to to remember god's character i think oftentimes when I feel false guilt, it is because I have a misunderstanding or I have forgotten because we often need to be reminded of who God is. Um, we're very fickle <laughs> as human beings and we often forget. I think as humans, when it comes to talents and abilities, we tend to fall into one of two camps. Either we're apathetic and we just don't care. Um, we're just not not into using our gifts. We're not into advancing the kingdom because it doesn't fit our lifestyle. It's not comfortable. It's not what we want to do. Or we fall into um, like a works righteousness sort of mentality where we feel that we have to perform in order to make God happy with us. I think both of those are the extremes and the middle ground is accepting that our salvation is paid for, but we do have a responsibility. So even though God is not going to expect me to do something that I cannot, that he knows I cannot do, he does expect me to work with what he's given me. It's not like I'm off the hook and I can just go on vacation the rest of my life. Uh, there's still heavenly work to be done. Um, so I just wanted to encourage all of you with that message. And I think the, so the, big, the big takeaway for today is be faithful with what God has given you. And leave the results to the Lord. Don't worry about it. Just be faithful to what God has given you. Trust that he is going to lead and guide you and be with you along the way. And don't, don't harbor false guilt over something that you're not in control of. That's my, uh, my tidbit for the day. I hope that you all are doing well, and I pray this message finds you well. Take care.